Happy New Year's, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Peter, and welcome to another video. Wait, what? It's almost uh, March. I don't listen. What did you expect? You subscribe to this channel. You know how this goes. Um, this time, uh, I would like to um, show you something fairly special, and that's a uh, retrospective or like uh, a post mortem of a uh, software project that I've uh, uh, that I've started and uh, finished with the help of. Uh, some or actually these amazing individuals over here these contributors apart from me I think it's uh, it's our uh, good friend Timmy and and my co-worker Phil who's also a good friend by the way so. um, and um, I'd like to show you around um, tell you what this project was about uh, what I've learned uh, how we decided to implement certain things and uh, maybe even like speculate what could have been better just so uh, I had end this project um, with uh, something constructive uh, to take away from other than, of course, uh, tears and uh, disappointment, uh, which is usually what happens at the end of a project. So um, the first, first thing first, um, the project is called VR Retreat. Um, it is a, as you can see, a challenge website to quit VRChat. For those of you who do not know what VRChat is, I would not urge you to look it up. It's a, I don't know, I don't know how you would, I guess, epilepsy warnings, apparently, uh, due to this video. It's a, it's a virtual reality chat service, kind of like you walk around and uh, talk to people. Would I recommend it? Absolutely not. Now, the thing is, um, just like with anything uh, these days, especially uh, now that, you know, we we are in uh, weird times where uh, let's maybe I, get, I guess it's getting better. I get, uh, does anyone need my opinion on anything that's currently happening? Um, basically, um, there is a portion of people who find themselves, uh, unfortunately, um, addicted to uh, things like VR chat, etc. And I mean, let's be honest, you are probably addicted to YouTube or something. Or coffee, I don't know. Um, or me and watching my videos. But then again, you know, that's why I leave uh, a couple of months uh, before another video just to, you know, unhook you. I couldn't do it with a clear conscience. It's definitely not my procrastination habits and uh, self destructive tendencies. All right. So basically what, um, so now you know the premise, hey, uh, challenge yourself to stop VRChat, but you know how um, challenging it is to, to stop something you're uh, fairly addicted to. And we know the first, uh, the first step is uh, to admit there's a problem, and I suppose you do that by just joining this project. But um, so here's uh, the plan that, that I devised, right? We're going to hook into VRChat itself, the service, and we're going to make sure, we're gonna check if you logged in uh, throughout January. I think it was, uh, uh, this project was executed, well, it was actually ran through uh, throughout January. It was called Just Live Your Life January. Um, uh, but then again, we could like sort of reuse this for any month, like, you know what I mean? So, um, so that's the premise, right? But now that that kind of has some uh, difficulties for sure, mostly because well, this service, this VR chess service, does not actually uh, give us a um, a decent API endpoint um, or any. Well, actually, they do have API endpoints. They have their own RESTful API, but um, it is not supported. It's not documented, and it's kind of not okay to uh, use it too frequently. So the guidance from VR chess themselves was. Uh, that you uh, shouldn't query the API more than once per minute. Now, that is rough. Uh, that is very <laughs> harsh uh, for uh, this type of in uh, this type of application. So those are the challenges. Basically, the first thing we kind of did or that I did because uh, I wanted to practice uh, uh, UX and UI is I came up with a um, with a UX UI document. Um, and we can probably still find it here. Uh, I used Figma. Uh, Figma is a, a free, as in money, um, 
uh, application for designing user interfaces. And this is basically it, right? So at first I kind of came up with like this idea of, uh, you know, what, what it could look like, what the dashboard uh, would look like. Uh, I think the idea basically was to have a spa, a single page application, which we kind of, which we kind of uh, steered away from. Oh, one thing that I should mention is that uh, this was uh, the the whole application was supposed to be developed uh, throughout December, so we did have a time constraint. So we wouldn't um, we wouldn't spend like multiple years on it, but also the scope needed to reflect it. So this is the idea of uh, the uh, the dashboard. You can see a little calendar, a very reminiscent of um, like the GitHub profile calendar. If you kind of uh, look at it like this one right the activity calendar except uh it's not so when this one goes uh, the, the the weeks uh, are sort of uh, vertical here um in the design we have weeks uh, horizontal which i feel was a better design choice because uh, it you know more looks more like a calendar really all right so this is the failed state if you if if the application detects that you did log into vr chat after like a couple of days, uh, then it would fail you, right? Um, if you, however, are still in the challenge, um, it would basically show you uh, sort of um, this kind of a view where you can not only see um, uh, where you are in the challenge, but you could also see other people. So then there's a uh, there's this idea of a um, of a uh, uh, like be other people holding you accountable or whatever so that you can do it with your friends you can laugh at them for failing or you know motivate them not to maybe you maybe you have like your own little uh, bet or whatever so that's the um that's like the dashboard view that was the first thing to uh to th that we would add but then um another uh problem arose and that's um, we did. We we ended up using a uh, library. Um, I don't know if we're gonna find it here. Um, probably a VRChat API complications gonna mention it. Yeah, right. So we used a um, a library uh, so called uh, VRChat API C Sharp, which sounds like an API that um, the VRChat would provide. However, it's part of a community uh, community process, sorry, a community, yeah, well, a community group where people uh, define the specifications of the of the API. They try to document it for themselves and so they that so that they have a standard that other uh, implementations of the library can uh, can follow. At least that's how I understand it. Maybe um, maybe there are some uh, minor differences in, in that because again I'm not part of this project I was like hey we can use that that's probably going to work but um, you can well you can actually get uh, yeah, like a user's um, um, a user's what am I doing there you go well you can get uh, user's information um, you cannot really see the last login uh, you can only do that for um, people who are your friends in VR chat. Now, um, another problem is that what if you lie about your, your account? We need account linking. We need to make sure that you link your VR chat account with our VR retreat account. OAuth 2 is not, a, is not an option here. Um, at least I've, I've heard that VR chat apparently does offer OAuth 2 now access to like individual developers you have to ask and you know like that's not something that would that we would reasonably be able to uh, do within uh you know the month so we opted for a bit of a different maybe more convoluted option of vr chat linking where if you once you register um which we did actually have a registration form in here there is the registration form make an account um you can sort of uh, fill it in, kind of have some uh, something similar to a privacy policy. Of course, this is free and open source software. So we follow the uh, GPLv3 uh, practices and, and we also are fairly ethical. So uh, literally all of the data that we had 
um, was uh, safely stored, encrypted, and then at the end of uh, January, completely deleted without any uh, traces. In fact, the server got scrapped as well. So nothing is uh, left behind after that. Of course, we have a login form as well. Um, and then the linking process, right? Which basically um, works in these three steps. You provide your VRChat display name. Um, we kind of check if if that exists, because uh, there's an API endpoint for uh, verifying that. Now, again, uh, this is where our little problem with not, uh, you know, not pinging the API uh, more than once per minute comes in. Uh, we kind of we kind of have to uh, add this like you can retry in however many seconds mechanism, which um, works. A fairly well i mean you can clearly see the fault in this if two people are on the website and they both press submit we clearly are um querying the api more than once per minute uh but rather than uh, bothering with a with a with a you know sort of a some uh what would you call it like a scheduler uh we instead opted for per user uh we'll just uh, our sort of legal uh, way of manipulating that was well that is our interpretation of uh one you know query per minute it's per uh user <laughs> but hey you know whether that would work or not well we didn't get banned so i suppose it it does uh it's fine um also i don't think that that uh you know query limit was actually enforced by vr chat i think it's just a it's just a Thing so that they can uh, potentially, uh, you know, block access to to any uh, or ban uh, like individual users. Now, uh, the next thing is we um, see. The funny thing is, the the website itself needs to have a VR chat account uh, because, of course, this it doesn't have an API. Uh, you know, it doesn't have um, automation APIs, right? So we actually are a real user as like the website itself is a is an actual user and uh, basically logs in with like a username and a password um to uh, do what it needs to um so it sends you a friend request in game you verify it uh, you accept uh, the the friend request and the last thing is this could still you could still somehow like trick someone into accepting a friend request from that and then like kind of like hijack their account so the last thing is um we generate a little code for you to put put in your bio um, which again um just adds that extra level of security there um, it's not like completely bulletproof you could technically but that's like it's a lot better and then you're ready for the challenge now you might have noticed uh that we don't require your email. Uh, that's a specific choice because um, these days um, it's rough to, uh, well, mostly because we don't need it. We don't want it. We don't care about your email. The only use case for an email in, in, in this uh, sort of application would be to, uh, perf uh, to basically have password resets. But the thing is, the data is only available for a month. And so um, after sort of like, uh, after, after thinking about it for a while, um, we decided that um, th it doesn't matter if we have excessive amounts of accounts. Um, it's not going to, you know, cause any any problem for us. And then your question might be, well, what if I what if I don't know? What if I forgot my uh, uh, my password and I have a a linked VR chat account? You basically register again relink your account it's going to unlink it from the previous account and link it to the new one um all right so that's how this linking works of course there's a landing page you've seen that one as well and we have some settings so uh normally you would be able to manage following um yeah do some security stuff of course and the ability to uh you know the standard gdpr like things uh, change the account that's linked, download the copy of everything we have about you, 
unlink it and delete the entire account altogether, which you don't need to do at the end of uh, January. It just happened automatically. So that's the UI, that's the UX. That's how uh, we can start. It's also a footer uh, with, again, you know, AG well, actually, yeah, I forgot uh, it's AGPL. Uh, the difference between GPL v3 and AGPL is that um, it's running on someone else's computer. So it stretches for a website, for example, um, it stretches the GPL3 rights onto the user of the website as well. All right, so that's, um, that's the UX, that's the UI. Um, we started with that, and then it was about, um, so, so now we knew the process, now we sort of knew what to do, and so the next thing was to, um, to write down uh, the issues. So I started with, uh, with a bunch of issues, uh, writing them out, uh, labeling them properly. I think the labeling system um, worked fairly well. Um, I wouldn't, uh, I probably wouldn't, wouldn't change it. I think the, the simplification of like, so, so the reason why uh, I put in specific uh, tags such as, you know, ASP.NET or backend is uh, for uh, external contributors, right? So the labels aren't necessarily for you um, as like a person who's like committed to work on this project. Uh, it's more for uh, other people who may want to participate. It's, easier for them to find the issue that they would like to work on that they can work on. Now, um, about around the time, so I think one of the other very positive uh, things about the project that I'm definitely uh, really proud of is uh, the fact that we, by developing our, um, our own project, we're able to help other repositories. So I think, as you've noticed, there was uh, a complication with the VRChat API, and I was uh, bashing my head against it for a while. But in the end, I tracked down the issue because the uh, the API library is um, open sourced. This might be GPL three compliant too. No, it's MIT. I mean, I think that is compliant, but still. Um, because it is open sourced, I could just look into it and uh, debug it uh, on my side and I found uh, a little issue where cookies would not uh, would not be stored, which uh, caused me not to be able to use the API, which is a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a bug. Uh, so I asked about it. Uh, this uh, Furak guy chick, Max, I think it's a good, well, that could be it. Whatever this Furak person from Sweden. Um, uh, helped and very quickly. I think I opened it. What December second, December fifth? It was. It was basically fixed. Um, until then, we were using our own fork of this of this wrapper, so it still wouldn't pose a. It wouldn't be a blocker from deployment. Um, but you know, by doing that, well, we helped this library work, right? And now that's. You know that 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 hopefully is going to help other people uh, in their endeavors, and I think uh, by when the by the time uh, we were developing, I think there was ju there were just us and and uh, Bin, who's a who's another uh, contributor that uh, you know I'll, I'll talk about. Um, there were in those two projects, whatever those are, yeah, remote client that that was not a thing. That that's a new project. Well, I mean, yeah, that's a 19 days ago initial commit. Yeah, that is a new <laughs> new project. What about the legacy, by the way? Is this still a thing? No, I, whatever. That's someone's. That's a new project, right? And so who knows? Maybe they can now comfortably use it because it works, right? Because when uh, we were implementing it, it wouldn't. But that's not the end of it. Um, a huge, huge, huge shout out to uh, our friend Timmy for uh, taking uh, one of the issues, uh, which was, um, it was a minor bug, where, oh, actually, it's the link's a different one. Oh, yeah, because, that, okay, that's, that's on a different repo. Uh, for taking a um, an issue uh, with uh, reCAPTCHA, we were using, we, we were using hCAPTCHA for uh, verifying uh, people are not robots because clearly, you know, 
you have just username and password uh, for authentication. So we need to make sure that um, people aren't, you know, automating uh, account creation. So we uh, used HCAPTCHA. I'm going to talk about the implementation detail in a bit. Um, and yeah, uh, Timmy figured out that apparently uh, the library that we're using, uh, which is just made by like this guy, Benjamin here, um, didn't quite um, satisfy one of our use cases for custom uh, validation messages and was able to, uh, to fix it, to uh, pull request a change into the into the library itself and again making uh the world a tiny tiny bit uh better of a place so um again thank you uh to timmy and of course thank you to benjamin for for you know providing the library as well but, but there you go so so that's that's the that's the overall a positive uh, impact of our project on the larger world which if you ask me this is why uh, uh why open source works why op open source is um, a really uh, cool thing that everyone can benefit from uh unless you're a greedy corporation who doesn't care about people much less processes and stuff whatever so <laughs> rant over um so that's that's and speaking of which um uh, our amazing contributors of course there was philip who who also provided um uh i think he worked on the footer i think he implemented the footer which uh, doesn't sound like much uh philip was uh, of course um like you gotta realize that the time frame is uh you know december it's like 26th of december we're all busy we want to spend our time with families uh it, it's very important to take breaks it's very important not to burn out uh, i i'm actually uh working on a uh, on a different video specifically talking about burnout and my experiences with it and how uh, it impacts me and impacts my day-to-day -day life i can definitely tell you as a little spoiler here maybe um it is much easier to prevent burnout than uh to sorry uh, than to uh fix it uh, recover from it so of course no no you know no shame there uh however even then um i'm very grateful for for philip's uh, contribution uh mostly because around you know, December 26, we had to wrap up. Like we had those, like, I think the beginning of the last sprint and we had two sprints in total, by the way, I'll show you the timeline as well. Um, but we needed to wrap up. And so like, there's no time. It doesn't look like much, right? But um, it's time that uh, had to, had to be uh, spent somewhere, somewhere else. So amazing. Plus, it would be such a shame not to have it because um, of our, you know, attempt to uh, sort of uh, com comply with GPO. So that's great. And again, as I mentioned before, MVP Timmy, who I genuinely think I wouldn't be able to finish this uh, this thing without on time. Um, uh, Timmy was there for. A bunch of a uh, bunch of our streams and um like completely impressed me i think with um with the the level of um of work going down to you know actually implementing real use cases and a following clean architecture and honestly the code looks pretty good couldn't have written it better myself um you know following unit tests and test during development I'm, impressed um so good job Amy. now uh so now that we have this out of the way let's actually take a look at the uh sorry the milestones uh so the sprints we had two in total we had one um that i don't does it show you it doesn't show you when it was opened but it was basically the beginning of of december Last is 26 days. I, I suppose it's a rough, uh, long <laughs> sprint. Um, 
But in that sprint, the, the goal was to set up the project, get our uh, pipeline working, uh, auto deploy. Actually, it wasn't auto, but deploy. Um, and, and all of the fluff around it uh, figured out. And to start, you know, to basically have something that, where people can start registering, uh, which we uh, were able to do. And on December 26th, you could, uh, it was deployed and you could start uh, registering for it. Now, the rest of it uh, was literally the feature set. And we actually were able to um, finish it on December 29th. So with two days to spare, I think those two days were still um, spent uh, doing QA stuff and, um, and deployment. So we had some minor technical difficulties too. Well, so speaking of deployment, um, this is an application made entirely with .NET 6. So it wasn't anything uh, drastic. We had a Vulture um, a VPS where I was running Debian. Um, if we look at the uh, workflow, uh, of course, uh, we have two two workflows. One of them is automatic. Uh, that's your standard CI CD uh, running uh, build and test. And the other one is uh, manually um, ran. So you have to actually kind of like click through uh, the actions, like here are these actions, and you can, production deployment, you would be like, you would click here and you would, bam, click this, and that would deploy it into production, only I had, I had privileges for that. You can see that some of the production deployments didn't work, especially the first ones uh, when I was setting it up. Uh, but then, of course, we also had uh, some, some other problems with uh, entity framework and uh, auto migrations as well. So uh, those were, um, those were fairly real too. So let's take a look at the, the deployment uh, process. So I think the first thing to mention is that in our settings, wait, what not? I think in our settings, well, we have a bunch of secrets stored inside, um, GitHub settings and I'll talk you through them. So, uh, f at first it's fairly standard stuff. Um, we, uh, first, uh, install EF core tools, uh, which .NET install global .NET EF, which allows you to generate um, migration bundles. Um, I suppose you guys probably kind of know, or at least um, you know, know a little bit about about migrations, uh, what they are. Uh, we can definitely make you know get, get another video going uh, on this topic, entity framework deployment of that and um, uh, migrations. Um, but basically we install this tool because we're going to need it later. We create a uh, published uh, instance of the web app. And by the way, something that I didn't talk about is the background worker. There is a cron routine every, I think, eight hours, that is, that goes through the database and updates the, um, the fail failure status of every uh, participant. So it would check one person wait a minute, pick another person, wait a minute, right? And as it, once it runs through them all, it waits eight hours and then repeats. So uh, again, working around the uh, API restrictions, being really good boys and uh, doing everything we can uh, to uh, not be mean to the API. I don't know why VRChat has no confidence in their APIs, but hey, um, or they're just greedy. Who cares? Uh, so that's that's one thing. So we create a we cre we publish both applications. So those are two separate uh, separate applications. Then we generate migrations, which you need to do from the web app, uh, where we create a migration bundle. Basically, what a migration bundle is um, is instead of you um, running migrations on on like a remote connection you can compile um, a migration bundle for let's say linux and then sh and then you know transfer that to your linux server and run and run it there from the actual uh, s uh from the actual uh, working directory 
of the application, which, which saves you um, some configuration troubles here. Funny thing about this, <laughs> this doesn't, there's a bug. I, I think it's still a, a real bug. The migrations bundle build will fail unless you have a dash dash configuration. And normally you would put like, uh, like debug or release, right? You would want release here. It needs to be anything other than that. So we have configuration. Oh, woo. it's a, yeah. Hey, we're dealing with VR chat. We're being, we're staying topical. It would not work without this, which is funny. Um, it doesn't have to be. Oh, well, clearly it can be anything else. Uh, I've seen people uh, put the <laughs> link to the issue as the configuration, which I think is very smart and, and uh, probably reasonable. But then again, you know, we have a little fun here. It's a tiny project. In production, I don't put uwus all around my code. Uh, <laughs> I swear. All right, next step was uh, setting up SSH access because clearly um, the uh, VPS was accessible through SSH. So... Um, it sets up the SSH directory. It's a standard uh, thing. A secrets.ssh key comes from GitHub. Uh, you can configure it under like settings and, and secrets, repository secrets, something like that. So we have our SSH key there. Um, so it's stored securely and you cannot, you cannot actually echo it as the deployment is, is going on and other people can't really see it. So it's, um, that's a fairly secure way of doing it. And then we would stop the production, uh, the production application, and then we would start the deployment. So we will first deploy the application. Now the funny thing is, uh, I would store we store our entire app settings JSON, which comes from uh, you know our web app application. Uh, we store the entire thing in uh, GitHub Secrets, um, and so we echo that into the file, right? Basically, the, the, the prod app settings is, you know, it's just a JSON, uh, which contains the, the, you know, production app settings. So it has the, the right connection string for the database. It has the, the right VRChat credentials and stuff. Actually, VRChat credentials are in this diff other config, but it's basically the same thing, right? It's, again, a JSON in a, in a file. Now, um, and of course, we will copy all of the contents. Uh, um, onto the website. Um, the website was called vrstop.health. It's no longer running. Um, hey, just a little thing. And then, of course, we would uh, basically do the same thing for uh, the background worker. Um, we would, uh, again, just echo some, some uh, uh, the, the connection string that it needed um, and uh, just ship it. And then we would copy the migrations that we generated in one of the earlier steps. Uh, we again copy it into the web app, uh, sorry, into uh, the application directory, and then we would run it. We would go there, make it runnable, and then run it with the connection string. Um, and then we would just start restart the 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 service, and that is it. That's the deployment. Uh, Automate it. Easy. Uh, it worked literally 90% of the times. Uh, the only times where the deployment failed uh, was due to a very clear issue. It was something very stupid always. It was like, oh, maybe I broke some, genuinely broke something, so it was supposed to fail. Uh, and of course, a reverting worked nearly every time. Well, actually, it worked every time, but what, when it happened, which happened like once, <laughs> um, it was as easy as roll back the commit, redeploy, fixed, right? See where the issue is, fix it. And so that was a fairly uh, easy process. Now for, our, um, uh, for an another uh, part of the automation, we used uh, Codacy for static code analysis, uh, which why have that open here. Um, Codacy basically um, gives you like a little grade for the um, quality of your code based on your settings. You can see that we started with like uh, on, on 26th of November, so we didn't have it there from the very uh, start. But um, we start so so we started with like some issues, and we gradually sort of got them 
down this was probably a crunch yeah 26 that's like we needed features to be there and then right after that so 26 is like two days later it was time to you know pay the technical debt see like minimizing minim but you can see it you can kind of see it. it's like when we pushed uh you know when we pushed changes on 26 we saw like oh well this is like this is getting this needs to be paid and knowing that it's basically the end of the project it was time to just do it so and when while i'm you know while i'm addressing uh, some of these issues might as well address them all and we ended up with uh, no issues um i think uh, it'd be kind of cool if we could see uh the issues or um if perhaps there is a history with like issues one that has let's say a couple of there's 32 issues can we look at those we can um so some of them were uh, due to misconfiguration of um uh, the the standards so for example indentation issues in in css uh those are super minor things but maybe we can filter it by uh oh no those are just uh there were some c sharp issues too um, those got fixed uh, fairly quickly. Uh, the rest was configuration. So um, we've got duplication here. I don't know how where it sort of gets gets it from. Um, not that horrible. Maybe that's the difference between A and A plus or something. I don't know. Um, fairly nice. If you do something crazy horrible, um, Codus usually catches that. Uh, tells you, uh, please don't do that <laughs> all right so and that's the the sort of setup that's the well, that's actually like the overview of it uh, before we go into the last part of the video which is the technical details and uh the the structure of uh the application we kind of look at uh some of our code i think what could have been done better is um documentation of the config files uh, because the application requires you to have certain config files ready uh it doesn't for example talk about um oh it does now yeah well uh the the h captcha filling you know that that feels like kind of disjointed a little bit because there's like there's configuration here then there's migration and then there's another configuration i think uh that could have been done a little better and this configuration uh was um there late uh, i think uh you know as soon as as soon as you edit the the config it should be reflected in the readme uh it's sometimes difficult to uh remember and however i think uh we should have put it in uh not a not an issue template do we have a pull request template if we if we i mean should it should probably be in a pull request uh, template as a checkbox uh, there's like a you could have like a checklist of all the things you need to make sure uh, before you can you well one before you can actually pr the change right uh, so one of them is like make sure that if you edit config you're genuinely um describing it in your readme um okay so that's uh that's it there. so let's talk about uh the the project structure the the architecture and uh the decisions um, about that um again this is not a uh, an architecture video so i'm not gonna really go too much into details but i will sort of describe the architecture we went for uh we vaguely f kind of go for the uh, clean architecture as presented by Robert C. Martin, aka Uncle Bob, where and I'm going to show you the the, the relations there. Um, we kind of merged some of these layers um, for our own convenience, uh, mostly because well, it's not a it's not a huge project to to sort of take care of. So first of all, uh, there's the, the the center of it are entities. Uh, surrounded by use cases now those two layers are core i mean hey they even show it merged so i suppose we actually follow we follow this diagram i i guess now that i look at it um the business logic or core we literally have core uh, i know it's super tiny i didn't install the uh the add-on that can scale this sorry uh, but if you can like squint your eyes the score here we actually have underneath it we have uh 
entities and use cases. So literally um, exactly the same thing, right? Now around it, uh, there are um, this sort of like uh, implementation detail um, layer. They kind of separate it into this green and blue where uh, the green would be like entry points, so access to the application. The blue would be like the data providers. We kind of have that. Uh, green is our web application. It's ASP.NET application. And blue would be our infrastructure project. So web app, you see infrastructure kind of has like all the implementations of uh, the, the vague stuff. It kind of ha has the, um, the VR chat stuff as well. Um, some of the other dependencies as well code generation for uh, bio to so those like bio codes codes that you put in your bio <coughs> sorry and then uh, of course uh, configure I'm not used to talking this much you know like when when you don't make videos it happens but then again there's one thing that never changes Peter always rambles <laughs> I just rant about like random stuff okay so <laughs> Uh, configuration itself we kind of have handled uh, inside web uh, web app it's the most of the well i mean yeah th those are also like the the sort of json files and stuff so that's kind of vaguely the the architecture we also were super super good boys and followed uh test driven development wherever possible because the the only way to go fast is to uh, do it right i think right um that's what I relearn every project. And yet again, every corner that I cut on this project was a pain point in the end, uh, which fortunately was none of the core logic. Uh, so everything that we have inside core are uh, boundaries, sorry, uh, use cases. A couple of use cases were bio code verification, starting the challenge, uh, account claim, and verifying friend status. Um, those use cases were never a problem. They just worked, uh, which is miraculous. I'm super proud of that. Um, so actually, maybe let's take a look at, let's say, verifying the, um, the, the, the code, the bio code. Uh, let's see. This is, so this is the core logic. This should explain to you how it's done, right? So if you, in this execute async me method, let's kind of look at it. You get user by user name fine okay um if we can't find them then uh logged in user now found okay that makes sense right these these are the the output port has methods that are fairly uh, uh easily named you like if you, you're not sure what this condition actually is is checking right then you can just read the output port that they do like no claim to be our chat account oh okay so i guess that's how you determine that uh, has bio because a request cooldown user has cooldown it makes sense all, all of this it's just like you should just read it go mm -hmm. yeah oh i guess so right and if the vrchat user's bio does not contain the bio code then bio code not found well i mean yeah you know what i mean like oh, okay you know like it's uh, it, it describes what's what's happening right this is the type of stuff if someone were, were to just explain to you how it's supposed to be done, this is basically what they would say it wouldn't go into details of the how, right? Uh, maybe this is the only thing that uh, I would probably uh, abstract further. Um, since, uh, well, could you though? I don't think, well, I suppose you could make like a weird little adapter that kind of does that. And maybe the user could have a method that accepts a VR chat, VRC user that uh, would do it. But then again, the, uh, the user is a, What's a VRC user? Yeah. Oh, that's a core entity. Okay. Well, in that case, yeah, absolutely. This could, uh, the IVR uh, retreat user could have a method that kind of takes in a VR chat user that like sets the, the pro this, these properties, right? Because this is a bit to too low level for a, <coughs> I'm sorry, for a, um, a use case. But then again, you know, um, it's not that bad. Um, so, so that's the, that, that's one of the things So that that's like an example of a, of a core. Now, uh, if we look at our, some of our tests, we do have architecture tests, um, just the, you know, most important, which is core should not depend on other projects. That's really it. Uh, we used, um, arch unit, 
uh, which was recommended to me by my uh, co-worker Jacob, so shoutouts. My guy, he's, uh, he's cool and smart and just like everyone else in our community. Wink wink, if you want to join our community, we have a Discord server in the, <laughs> in the description or something, I don't know. Um, you too can be smart. Um, no guarantees though. <laughs> Uh, so so that's that's one of the things of course we have uh, a we have tests for um the uh, individual use cases again they're fairly simple so uh, i'm actually kind of kind of proud of how we're handling uh, a lot of these um we have a lot of uh, i mean i feel like uh, there was care taken to um sort of um maintain the uh the test api and and to to make sure that it's read easy that it's compact so the this like arrange logged in user for example um actually hides a very ugly uh mock setup m o q setup so that makes it a lot easier to read these tests and to see what's wrong potentially <coughs> I'm sorry, I'm just like, my, my throat is dry after talking for only 46 minutes. You guys know that I, my videos are usually a lot longer. Damn, I need to get back and to build up my uh, speaking muscle. Um, all right. So, uh, let's move to a web app before I pass out. Um, again, it's just a standard MVC um application let's actually open let's say a controller i think the home controller is one of the dirtiest places um the idea behind it is look entry points and like are these are implementation details all right if there's if there's something that can that that, that we can afford to you know for now um uh, have be subpar it's going to be this layer. We absolutely cannot afford, uh, you know, something confusing inside core. Uh, that's like b mission critical uh, stuff that absolutely cannot fail. Um, if, however, you know, in our controller, it's like, oh, it sends you to the wrong route or doesn't fill in the model properly or whatever. Yes, it's an issue, but it's not going to pose like a critical issue. Uh, down the line, right? Uh, it's not going to prevent the user from, let's say, registering, uh, or it's not going to uh, just completely ruin, um, I don't know, the, the verification process, right? So that's why this is, I mean, this needs to be refactored, uh, like horribly, horribly refactored, because this was the last, you know, day of crunch, and uh, the worst part of it, and See, that's, see, there you go. That's classic Peter. This is for local testing purposes. I bet it's used as well, Peter. What's, where's your, oh, okay, yeah. No, it's fine. So um, what I'm basically saying is um, that you need to see the horrible code that I write to not feel bad about it when you do it. Um, hey, uh, you know, I'm no saint, all right? It's a trade-off. You can't, you know, really like do it. See, here's the thing, right? Like we had a deadline, right? Like that had to have been done. <laughs> so, and I know that's that's like a horrible excuse, but it's it's a pain point that is addressed. It's documented. It's not the worst thing. It's not like um, but it's it's at a place where we can afford to uh, slack a little bit. It is technical debt, and it does need to be fixed. Um, if this project continues. But basically, uh, the calendar generation is horrible. This algorithm is f tragic. But hey, um, I think you could understand it within real time. Um, it's a bit too explicit. And the biggest problem is that it is inside the controller, right? Absolutely should not be in the controller. It should be in its own utility. Uh, and that's the shortcut. That's uh, basically the... Uh, biggest shortcut here. Um, other controllers are fairly uh, better at uh, things like that. Right? 
they utilize uh, either um, web apps, sorry, uh, ASP.NET's um, you know authentication uh, management, um, and of course uh, use. Basically, they don't have much logic in in the controllers themselves. It's mostly um, uh, just kind of like config configuration stuff. It's just uh, what do they call it? Like piping or no? That's uh, plumbing. Sorry. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's just plumbing. Um, nothing too serious here. This should this unused using directive should be gone though. Um, and that's kind of that. That's basically it, right? That's our that's our application. Um, I guess I can run it for you if that's gonna make any difference for you. So, hey, this is the this is the the landing page uh, now running in Firefox. I can join the challenge by registering if I just try to do it. It doesn't work, right? Tells me a couple of things. Username for so for debug, I have a there's a. Uh, just so you don't think that um, we're completely bonkers in our program in the if it's debug then we turn off um, password requirements or at least don't make them as strict uh, so don't so I can just be Peter with like password password okay now, and as you can see, our, our recapture works. Oh, I'm gonna sit here forever, right? Bike, 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 bum, bum, bum. Am I human? I am. And supposedly I should be able to register. Now I'm not, I don't, I, I don't think this is going to uh, work fully, mostly because I think our end API endpoints are um, uh, either off or yeah, like this is oh, this is not gonna work because now uh, the uh, what's it called? Yeah, uh, the SQL server. I don't think I actually. You know what? I don't have an SQL server running. I thought it comes with um, with Visual Studio, but uh, oh, I don't even have the. And even if I did, I don't have it migrated, so I wouldn't. But I basically could not open a connection to a SQL server. So yeah, I don't have the server set up. Um, but if I did, um, I assure you it would work because it did work throughout January. And I think that's the last thing that uh, we're going to mention here. Got some... Uh, where did it go? I swear, I think I put it on my desktop. Oh, it's on the second monitor desktop. That's cooler. Oops. Can I please... Oh, there it is. Great. Right so... How did it go? How did the actual challenge go? Um, well, we had so 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 that was this guy. I did forgot to mention. <laughs> um, there's this guy called Bin, who opened an issue here, saying, "And he plans on finishing this," um, which is really cool because. Uh, we did finish it, but also uh, he like promoted it on his uh, Discord server, and so we got a lot more users than we expected. We wanted, uh, we I estimated around five people joining. In the end, uh, there was about twenty, twenty to twenty-five people joining. This is not the full list. I think this is taken uh, somewhere from like the registration period. Well, actually, no, that's already when the it's yeah, there you go. That's three days in. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, but as you can see, uh, by the way, this this alignment was fixed. All right. I fixed it like soon after um, you can see there is plenty of people in there. Seems to work fine. Siller doesn't as one of my friends. Uh, shout out Siller, I suppose. Um, and of course, Opushin oh, wasn't there yet, but see, here's the thing. Um, in the end, uh, did people finish the challenge? You can see already, uh, like people failing after 14 hours. <laughs> yeah, that didn't <laughs> that didn't work too well for them. Now the thing is, um, the first day, January 1st, was still a leeway period because of uh, time zone differences. 
So it still would allow you to sort of like be on VRChat on January 1st, uh, but technically you shouldn't. And then um, in the end, um, yeah, only two people, two people finished. Um, these two people, uh, Pusheen, uh, I do know, and uh, some random person that I do not know. You can see that I failed. I've, <laughs> yeah, but like, look, <laughs> I am not addicted. Okay, <laughs> that's the first thing. It's a, a second. That's not copium. I'm genuinely not. And second of all, um, I don't know. I have to test if it fails correctly, right? <laughs> No, it's fine. So, um, hey, I'm a developer, not a participant, okay? So, um, yeah. So, in the end, I mean, was it successful? Um, yeah, sure. It was a very successful launch. Um, the feedback from you, we got like, crazy good feedback from, from people. Um, uh, what I learned is catching a lot more interesting... Um, exceptions and, and uh, interesting things that you normally don't think about. So for example, there was a guy with a Japanese name. Um, I don't know if he's here. No, he's not in the list. But uh, there was a guy with a Japanese name and yeah, it didn't, that kind of failed. <laughs> but um, yeah, so, so that, uh, that was fixed. So we had a very quick turnaround, very quick uh, patch and response uh, sort of like time um, because it took us just, you know, hey, you, you patch the issue, push it in, passes uh, the, the, the CI CD, gets deployed, and we're, we're done. We're golden. Like, it's just like that. It's, it's a no, um, no obstacle workflow or minimum obstacle workflow. That's it. <coughs> I need to go drink something, man, because ah, super dry. So here's the thing. Um, thank you everyone who participated in this project. Thank you everyone who uh, supported it. Um, thank you to all the participants if you're watching for some reason. Um, and if you would like to contribute to this for some reason, there are still issues open. Um, and if you want to host it for yourself or fork it and uh, change it to like a different game or whatever um, you are welcome to it is a GPL licensed so um, yeah and let, let me finish on, on one note and that's one of the main reasons it, that, that, that I was able to finish this was um, because it was, it was a project about something that I believe in because it's something that um, and I'll talk about it more in the burnout video but um, it is something that I care about. Uh, programming in and of itself is a mean to, to an end. Um, and it's, it's uh, very difficult, at least for me, to get uh, passionate about uh, the nuances of it, or just like the, the minutia of it. Um, because it, on its own, holds, hold no, it kind of holds no value. I mean, there, there's, a, there, there's a lot to be said about tooling, uh, meta programming and uh, you know like the beauty of syntax, but but I would argue that that's a different topic. That's not programming itself. That's kind of like maybe linguistics, I suppose, or uh, maybe uh, systems thinking. I don't know what to call it, but not the uh, the act itself, right? I feel like the act is, as I said, a I mean to an end. And um, if you're just trying to like improve and you just want to have a little pet project, you want to like do something. Um, it's important that it's something you care about that you're going to work on because I've been burned out, burnt out for a while. And I can tell you in the middle of that project, like when while I was streaming it, I felt it again. I felt the love. I was like, again like it was like this is what like holy i love this um and that's a feeling that yeah that, that is worth cherishing and that it's worth investing time into figuring out how to maintain that so i think that's just like a little ranty uh and <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching as i said link to the new 
newly established Discord should be in the in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, I will see you guys in the next video where we hopefully talk. I hopefully it's not gonna be the next year or three months from now, right? Okay, I'll see you guys later.